Hey everybody, this is example number six for structural analysis of slopes and deflections using the conjugate beam method. The problem statement that we have is we're asked to calculate the slope at point B and the displacement at point C using the conjugate beam method. And EI, Young's modulus, times the moment of inertia of the beam is constant. So here's our beam. We have a pin support at A, a roller support at B. And here's the free end on the right hand side, it's point C. And we have an overhanging span on each end of the beam. And we also have a concentrated load at both ends of the beam. And the concentrated load is equal to, load is equal to 4 kilonewtons, and we call it P, and also P here. And the total length is equal to 4 meters plus 4 meters plus 4 meters, so that's 12 meters. And we're going to call the length L. So before we proceed to the solution, just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. Let me show you their website. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. And I have used Bentley's software and I can say that the software was very easy to use and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website, it's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. And if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now going back to our conjugate beam problem. The first thing we're going to do is determine the reactions at support A and B. And so this, since this is a symmetrical loading scenario, we can see that the reaction at A will be equal to the reaction at B, and that's going to be equal to P, which is a concentrated load that's acting at each end of the beam. Next, we're going to construct the M over EI diagram, the moment divided by EI diagram, and also the shear, the shear diagram. First, we'll do the shear. So here's a support A is at this location, support B, and here's C. So we have negative shear from the left end all the way to support A, and then we have zero shear between A and B, and then we have a shear equal to P from B to C. And then we're going to construct the M over EI diagram. So the moment, the bending moment will be equal to the area of the shear, so it's P, the area of this rectangle is equal to negative P times uh, base times height or length, length times width. So the width is equal to L over 3. So that's how we got this here. Negative P times L over 3. That's the bending moment divided by EI. So this is the maximum absolute value of the bending moment is equal to negative PL divided by 3 EI. Next, after this, we're going to construct a conjugate beam. So here's our real beam. We have a pin support, internal pin support at A, internal roller support at B, free end at C, and also free end over here. We can call this uh, D if we want. So the conjugate beam, for the conjugate beam, whenever you have a free end, that free end will be, will be a fixed end. So we have fixed end over here at D and C. And then in the conjugate case, um, the internal pin or internal roller will become an internal hinge. So now we have an internal hinge at A and an internal hinge at B. And then we overlay the M over EI diagram on top of this conjugate beam, and it should be pointing away from the it should be pointing away from the beam. So since we had negative moment, it's pointing downwards. And again, it's equal to negative PL over 3 EI is the value from here to here. That's the magnitude. 
So now we're going to do, we're going to calculate the slope uh, at B, which is, a, which is a slope at support B in the real beam. So again, here's our conjugate beam. It's fixed uh, on both ends. We have internal hinges at A and B. So we just simplify and divide this beam into three parts. So we have the part, um, we divide it into three parts. This is part DA, and then the middle part is AB, and then the right hand part is BC. So to calculate, um, to calculate the slope at, to calculate the real slope at support B, we have to calculate the conjugate shear at B. The conjugate shear at B. So let's take a look at, before moving forward, before going uh, ahead, I just want to let you guys know also that uh, in, this, in this model, when we divide it up into three sections, we show the reactions also. So we show the shear and bending moment on the fixed support here, and then also the shear and bending moment at support C. And then at the internal hinges, we'll just have uh, reactions. There, there's just going to be force reactions. There's not going to be any bending moments. So we have re, uh, conjugate shear A, VA prime. And on each, on each uh, side, it's going to be acting in opposite direction. So on this, uh, in this portion, hold on one second. So here it's uh, the VA prime is acting downwards, and here it's acting upwards. And then also VB prime is acting upwards, and VB prime is acting downwards over here. So it's acting opposite on each side of the of the hinge. So now we're going to calculate. Uh, the conjugate shear VB prime. So to calculate the conjugate shear VB prime, we're going to isolate this uh, this part, this uh, this part of the beam, the middle the middle portion, which is from A to B. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the moment about A. So we're just taking we're just considering this portion of the beam. So we take moment about A, so uh, if we take the moment about A, clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive. We have the shear VB prime here, VB prime, and the moment arm about point A is L over 3. And then we also have to account for the conjugate loading, which is our, which is our M over EI which is the M over EI diagram that we that we overlaid on top of the conjugate beam. So what we're saying is we also have to consider this. So the resultant of that is equal to it's just a it's just a rectangular loading is equal to length times width. So the so the length or the width you can say is PL over 3 EI times the um, we can say the length is equal to L over 3. Okay, and then this L over 3 times 1 half, what we're saying is that since this is a rect rectangular loading, the resultant will be acting here. And so the distance from support A to this resultant is equal to L over 3 times 1 half. So that's how we got this. This is the moment arm. Okay, so we just simplify it. VB prime times L over 3 equals PL cubed over 54 EI. So we simplify and get VB prime by itself. So the slope at B, which is equal to the conjugate shear at B, is equal to PL squared over 18 EI. And now we can go ahead and plug in the actual numbers for the load and the length. The P equals um, 4 kilonewtons, and the length is equal to 12 meters. So this comes out to be our slope at B is equal to 32 kilonewton meter squared divided by EI. Now we're going to calculate the displacement at C. So to calculate the displacement at C, let's go back to our conjugate beam here. And now we're going to focus on this portion, BC. Okay? So if we focus on that, 
we see that we have VB prime. We just solve for that. That's the we just solve for that value uh, for that, and then we also have the VC prime and MC prime, which is the shear and the bending moment on this fixed portion of the conjugate beam, and then we have our M over EI. So uh, this is a triangular uh, triangular conjugate loading here. So to calculate the displacement using conjugate beam method, we basically have to calculate the corresponding conjugate, uh, we have to calculate the conjugate bending moment at that location. So we're looking at, we want to calculate the displacement at C, so we have to calculate the conjugate bending moment at C. And in order to do that, using basic statics, we'll just take the moment about point C. Okay? So what we have is VB prime times L over 3, which is a moment arm here, VB prime times L over 3, and L over 3, just so you know, is this value here, the moment arm from, from the location B to C, from VB prime to point C. And then we have this triangular conjugate loading, so it's just going to be equal to the force the resultant force times the moment arm. And the resultant force, we have to use the formula for area of, area of triangle. That's going to be base times height divided by 2. So divided by 2, and the base is equal to L over 3. And then the height is equal to PL divided by 3 EI. And the moment arm, so this resultant force will be acting somewhere here, we can say. So the distance from here to here, from this resultant location to point C is equal to L over 3 times 2 thirds. And so that's how we got this. And then lastly we have MC prime. So we get, uh, we solve for MC prime, and MC prime, the conjugate bending moment at point C is equal to negative VB prime times L over 3 minus PL cubed over 81 EI. And since we just calculated VB prime in the previous step, we just plug it in here, and we just simplify it further, and we get that the, that the uh, conjugate bending moment at location C is equal to negative 5 times PL cubed over 162 EI. And lastly, we can finally uh, plug in the values for P for the load, the concentrated load and the length. 4 kilonewtons and 12 meters is the length. And we get that the deflection or displacement at location C is equal to negative 213.33 kilonewton meters cubed divided by EI. So this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the website. It's engineeringexamples.net. And like the Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash engineering examples. Thanks.